modern times, steamship travel has become a most popular source of pleasure. And of all the thrilling experiences of world cruising, none can excel the trip from New York to Chile on the luxurious American liners which carry the stars and stripes to all the interesting ports of call along the way. And in addition to providing accommodations and diversified entertainment for their passengers, act as ambassadors of trade and goodwill between the continents of North and South America. The passengers we meet on board represent so many walks of life and hail from so many different countries that they bring to this great pleasure craft an international atmosphere. For here we find doctors, lawyers, diplomats, authors, engineers, actresses, and numerous others from every field of human endeavor, all gathered together as one great family, sharing alike the conveniences and the pleasures of one home representing, as it were, the nearest approach to a practical utopia ever inaugurated in the annals of human experience. In all our world travels, nothing has brought us greater pleasure or more friends than life on board these luxury liners, and we feel highly indebted to the great steamship companies who have contributed so much to the comfort and pleasure of modern travel and the consequent enlightenment of mankind. And now our great ship is sailing into the harbor of Valparaiso, chief seaport and gateway to Chile, that enterprising republic which has enthusiastically joined with Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, and Peru in attracting the stream of trade and travel to the west coast of South America. The customary thing to do after arriving at Valparaiso is to drive out to Viña del Mar, a picturesque suburb with a colorful array of hotels and private residences, a golf course, a racetrack, bridal paths, and bathing beaches, all combining to make Viña del Mar one of South America's most popular pleasure resorts. casino with its very sophisticated cosmopolitan flair, roulette and practically every other game of chance may be played. This imposing building also contains a library and a ballroom, as well as palatial dining rooms and a theater which will seat 1,200 persons. Miramar, Concon, and several other bathing beaches help to make Viña del Mar the leader of South America and a happy rendezvous for globetrotters from all parts of the world. A few hours' rail journey from Valparaiso is Santiago, the capital of Chile and the fourth largest city in South America. A modern metropolis with fine hotels and restaurants, up-to-date shops, bustling office buildings, and the best of modern theaters. <laughs> Club is one of the most famous of its kind in South America, and its membership list reads like the who's who of an international institution. Santiago is noted for its beautiful parks and imposing monuments, one of the most famous of which may be seen at the Parque Forestal. The Alameda de las Delicias is the famous promenade of Santiago, where the younger set of the city enjoy the simple diversion of promenading in romantic settings that are reminiscent of old Spain. Chile is noted for its delicious fruits and wines, often used in preparing a popular native drink known as the Consuela Cocktail, 
consisting of crushed peaches or crushed strawberries and champagne. Vying with the fruits are the flowers of Chile, which grow in profusion and produce an exquisite perfume. At Santa Nicolasa, we met a little caballero of six years, practically born in the saddle and considered to be one of the champion riders of Chile. Among the early races which were dwelling in Chile at the time the Spaniards arrived were the Araucanian Indians, living in the section south of what is now Santiago. They were an aggressive, warlike people who successfully withstood the attacks of the invaders and held the distinction of being one of the few unconquerable races on the continent. The Araucanians were never brought into subjection by the Incas and were never conquered by the Spaniards. Throughout the warfare and invasions taking place in the early history of the continent, they managed to maintain their independence. Today, about 100,000 of these Indians are living in the neighborhood of Temuco, near the Chilean Lake District, calling themselves Mapuches, meaning people of the land. They are a peaceful, dignified people, engaged chiefly in agricultural and industrial pursuits, and are protected by law from exploitation. One of the most entrancing regions in all South America is the Chilean Lake District, which extends down the central valley of Chile from Temuco to the chain of southern lakes which stretch eastward into the Argentine. Many of the lakes and streams abound in trout and salmon providing a veritable paradise for the fishermen. And the mountains offer the thrills of the Alps to the climber, many of them providing all year round skiing over some of the most exciting runs on the globe. The crowning scene in this beautiful region is the snow-capped volcano, known as Osorno, or the Fujiyama of Chile. Relatively recent times, these beautiful lakes were the guarded domain of the Araucanian Indians. But now, thanks to modern transportation by both sea and air, they are conveniently accessible to all travelers who would visit one of the world's most beautiful scenic attractions. And it is here, in the glorious light of a setting sun, that we most reluctantly conclude our impressions of Chile, the land of charm. <laughs>